Community Development Liaison Person with Donor Network West. Today I have a panel of very, very, very interesting guests and champions of organ and tissue donation. First, I'd like to introduce Sister Emily. Sister Emily, welcome. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for asking me. This is one of the greatest privileges to be able to speak for organ donation. I have been privileged to, um, to be involved with the organ donation in the Los Angeles area and in the Idaho, Boise, Idaho area. And now I serve at St. Agnes and I'm a chaplain in the intensive care and the emergency room. So I do have opportunities to assist family members who are generous enough to give the gift of life to others. Thank you so much for being here today. Next, I have Barbara Alimo. Go ahead. And I'm Barbara Alimo, and actually I'm Barbara Alimo and Charlie Alimo because I'm here because of his experience of receiving a kidney transplant, and then we went on to become uh, donor ambassadors. And so um, I'm so proud to be here to represent him as well. Thank you. And next we have? Father Dan Avila, um, I'm a priest of the Diocese of Fresno. Um, I have the privilege of working uh, for vocations, promotion of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, and also enjoying now the experience of working at a parish, Our Lady of Victory Parish here in Fresno. So it's a privilege to be associated with the uh, California Organ and Transplant uh, Network and to promote this great cause, um, helping to save lives um, by generous gifting of what we need, but sometimes we also can share. So. Great, thank you all for being here. We like to call <coughs> ourselves um, Donate Life, or in Spanish, Done Vida, which is just very simply giving, of, giving life. Um, April is National Donate Life Month, and that's why we're here speaking about organ and tissue donation, and we'd like to be able to ask Barbara, who is a Donate Life Ambassador with Donor Network West, about her experience and to share a little bit with us about Charlie and his experience. Well, in 2011, Charlie received his kidney, and we had two wonderful years before, before God said it was his time. And so we are so thankful to the family who donated their son's kidney for Charlie. And um, we did write a letter to the family expressing our gratitude that he truly was an inspiration to my husband to want to live his life in a very healthy way as a tribute to that young man in, their fa in his family. Um, my husband and I are very involved, have been very involved with the diocese and we were involved as Marriage Encounter. We were in leadership, we presented weekends, and actually here in this area, we did give weekends at the Ryan Pastoral Center, so, so it brings back a lot of memories for that. And uh, right now, uh, we are part of the marriage preparation team for the Diocese of Fresno, and so, um, even without Charlie physically present, he is very much spiritually part of my life. And I promised him, even as he was dying, that I would continue to be there and to uh, promote organ and tissue donation because of what a tremendous gift it was to us. And that I would continue working with the young married, the pre, excuse me, the pre-married couples so that they would have the opportunity of the way we believed in marriage. Great, thank you for sharing that with all of us. I think um, that Charlie's spirit is here today. Very much. So Father Dan, let me ask you a question. Um, maybe some of the viewers might be wondering, what role does, our, does your Catholic faith play in becoming a champion for organ and tissue donation? I think it's almost um, a requirement in the sense that you know, the basis of our faith is the generosity of the Lord Jesus Christ who gives his life 
for sinners, you know, for the salvation of all peoples. And in that gift of self-giving, that, that sacrifice of self, we, we are called to imitate that. So to be a Christian means to live a life of giving of self, whether that's in serving or, or <clears throat> in helping people financially or whatever that giving can be, we have to be giving people. And our church has been very clear um, that giving shouldn't end uh, just because our life ends, right? So um, part of the communion of the saints is that our brothers and sisters in heaven who are constantly giving of their prayers for us to guide us, inspire us in our way to God. And when a person is coming near death, you know, to, to have the, the notion that perhaps uh, part of this earthly body that God gave to me could be useful for another. Now that I may not use my eyes or my my skin or um, my organs, and if they're still in good shape, to be able to give that gift to someone else and to know what I, what I think a great comfort for a person to know that as they're leaving this life, one of their last acts would be to pass on the hope and the promise of life to another person who might share in one or more of their organs. So it's really at the very heart of our faith. As Jesus gave, so we are also called to give throughout life and even up until the last moment of life. Thank you. That was well said and beautifully mm -hmm. felt by all of us on the panel. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Sister Emily, um, your work is amazing that you've been able to um, be at several different hospitals and be part of the chaplaincy program. And you've seen families struggle with organ and tissue donation, the decision. So that's why we're asking people, especially in the month of April, to make that decision so that your loved ones don't have to make that choice for you. But haven't you seen a real healing of families who, are, who have been given the opportunity and decide to yes. say yes? Yes, and like I say, as a chaplain, we never try to persuade a family to give or not to give. No. But once they have said that they will give, we stick with them and encourage them. And um, yes, in one area where I was, we were invited to a memorial service where the donor families were invited and the persons who had received an organ was there. And when we walked in, we were given a flashlight. Yeah. And during the prayer, all of the lights were turned out. And then at one moment, they said, put your flashlight on. And they said, that is what happens when you give an organ, mm. you save a life. That's beautiful. And on that note, we would, um, it, that, that beauty is similar to the beauty that we get to have every January 1st at the Rose Parade. And the Rose Parade float that was um, featured a rose dedicated to um, Charlie Alimo. And we have floor, uh, there was Charlie Alimo, Sebastian Amesqua, and Esther Padilla were all honored with the memorial rose placed on the on the float this year 2015 january 1st so we know that many of you watch the rose parade even though we're in april we're still having events where we um, honor the family and give them back because once we take the fluorograph off the float itself we frame it so we're hoping that when you see the beauty of it that if you haven't made your decision yet that you'll soon decide in favor of organ and tissue donation. That's an encouragement though that we want to give to people as we're sharing today is that there has to be a choice on everyone's part um, to leave that choice for others um, can sometimes put them in a difficult position and so for us to be able to discuss um, uh, with our family members our wishes our desires um, to make note of it, either using the uh, the driver's license uh, method, mm -hmm. which you probably mm -hmm. will discuss, right. but making that known is so important to people. Mm -hmm. And um, if there's anything that, that I think would be wonderful for our, our viewers to get from this is that have have this conversation with your family, you know? Correct. Begin the conversation and make sure that you, you have that honest conversation that sometimes is difficult among family members, but if it's if it's the difference between helping save someone and not, I think it's easier to, to err on the side of making that decision to help someone. Sure. Mm -hmm. I even tell the young couples before, you know, all you need to explore all these areas in your life 
and I ask them to consider being organ and tissue donors and that they need to discuss that even before they get married. So, mm -hmm. yes, I even tell them then. Great. Yes, it's so great when a family member, if a loved one is dying, and they, uh, and they're approached maybe by the organ procurement, and they'll say, "Oh, I don't know," and then we'll say, "Well, did you ever look on their driver's license?" And once they see it on their driver's license, that's it, and so it's like they say a living memorial of their loved one. Right. Right, and it's better if we have that discussion before something happens yeah and in yes. the, the in honoring all of the donor families and all of the recipients who have also given of themselves to share their story with the with our Catholic community we ask that we all just consider all of them in this month right. of reflection sure right yeah. before the holiday it's a beautiful term a living memorial you know uh, some of us may dream about having our name on a building or, or on a freeway overpass sign or something like that. What a better thing to have, <laughs> to have a, a living really? memorial in that 50 people, I just mentioned about that young man in Porterville, 50 people whose lives were changed and, and saved by that gift of his, his generous gift. That's a living memorial to that person. You know, right, restores um, sight to someone who can't see, restores movement perhaps to someone who can't walk, right. restores mobility, your independence, people are allowed, can go on to work and, and live productive lives. Right. That's, that's a living memorial. Sure. And you yeah. get to live in honor of that every, every single day. Do you find, I, I guess I would ask a question, do you find that those who have received are more inclined to be donors themselves? We do find that because they're more aware of the process and donation and what it meant and that their lives were enhanced or extended. So then they become aware of some, maybe a mm -hmm. topic they weren't necessarily aware of. When we go into a hospital and have a, a procedure, yeah. you might find people are nervous because they're just thinking about the procedure, but they have to think about the people who are who are the physicians and all the people are caretaking for them, their family that got them there. There's lots of other things to think about when, when we're in that position. I think you, right, can, you right. find that to be the case, oh, yes. Sister Emily. Yes, yes. And uh, I always think that once they made the decision as chaplains, we try to follow along until the actual surgery has been performed and then follow later to make sure that they're at peace and they're, they're happy with their donation. And the other thing we really try to do is sometimes to support the nurses also, the nurses taking care of the patient who's going to be the donor, and also the nurses that come from your organization to be there right. because they spend long hours looking and, and taking waiting. taking care of the family. And, yes. So, um, we're going to take a little break now um, and give you an opportunity to reflect on what we've been talking about, and then we'll talk a little more about some very specific stories from the Valley. Okay? Thank you. KNXC thanks all its loyal viewers and respected businesses who have supported your Catholic television station. Now you can support KNXD with program underwriting by having your name, your company's name, or organization associated with your favorite program. Detailed information about you or your company will appear before and after each program or day part you select. Keep the quality and spiritual message alive and make a difference. Call 559-488-7440 today or go online at knxt.tv to find out more about program underwriting on KNXT. Hello, welcome back. I'm Marcella Corona, Community Development Liaison Person for the Donor Network West here in Fresno, and I'd like to reintroduce my panel of distinguished guests this <laughs> today. Sister Emily, go ahead and let us know. I'm Sister Emily, a Holy Cross sister and a chaplain at St. Agnes Medical Center, and I work mainly in the intensive care and emergency room. So I have a lot of opportunities to help with the organ donation when it's taking place. Thank you for being here. Go ahead. And I'm Barbara Alimo, uh, widow of Charlie Alimo, and I have been involved in the diocese for many years as a marriage encounter uh, team and also marriage preparation 
And as a matter of fact, I have taught here in the diocese at St. LaSalle School, so I have had many opportunities to be involved with the diocese. Great, thank you. And? Father Dan Avila, Diocese of Fresno, a priest of this diocese, uh, involved now in the vocations ministry and uh, parish work at Our Lady of Victory here in Fresno. Great. So we're all here today because these are all, all of us are champions for organ and tissue donation. And we wanted to um, not forget to mention that April is National Donate Life Month. And in that month, it gives us opportunity to reflect on past donors, donor families. And seven years ago, the Amesqua family, um, were, they were involved in a car accident and lost their seven-year-old son. Mm -hmm. He, Sebastian Amesqua, was honored this year in the Rose Parade with a rose dedicated in his name, and he wrote along with Charlie Alimo's rose. He was also honored this year. And so the Amesqua family have been very, very strong champions of organ and tissue donation. They lost a child, and um, they have another son, um, Man e Emmanuel, who's going to be entering high school soon, and he also is a Donate Life ambassador. He volunteers his time mm -hmm. with our organization and tries to share his brother's story with others, even younger people than we would normally be able to have an opportunity to speak with. And so the Amesqua family is a family that should be remembered, not only in the month of April, but in our prayers. Yes. And um, their generosity is something that it, it, just, it just baffles me every single day. I'm in awe of their their spirit. As a family, we went went to my job. Uh, I was driving from from uh, from there, and uh, we were involved in an accident uh, where uh, we lost uh, Sebastian. And at, at that point, when uh, we were when I was extracted from uh, the vehicle, I looked around and I see uh, a scene where I thought I had lost my entire family at that moment. The decision to uh, to uh, donate Sebastian's organs. Um, was something that uh, uh, our faith uh, helped helped us uh, um, make that decision um, because you know God has has given His Son uh, for us. We're here on this earth to help, um, and this is one way that uh, that we're able to do that. Uh, Sebastian was the answer to uh, three people's prayers. Organ donation is is that's what it is. It's it's the answer to a. Uh, to the prayer that many people that are in need are waiting for. I think it's empowering to um, not forget the, f the loved ones that have passed. Every time that, that we're at events, I, I talk about him. Uh, I carry him with me always. Um, he's here in my, uh, now we've got, you know, nice digital displays. Uh, uh, you know, he's, he's always with me and uh, I carry him with me always. Um, we talk about him every day. We miss him every day. It's really important making sure that you're educated, that you understand what it is that you're doing uh, when you participate in Donate Life, um, when you, you know, register to be a donor. It doesn't guarantee you that you're going to be a donor, but it's showing everyone, yourself included, that you're interested in more than just existing, that you're interested in giving back to the community if you were able to, that you give, you know, and you'll be an answer to somebody's prayer if you have that opportunity. Not everybody can be a donor, but if we have enough people interested in um, registering, then there's a bigger opportunity that somebody's life can be extended and maybe saved. And that's why we urge people to, to register and become uh, organ, organ donors. Have the conversation, more importantly, have the conversation with, uh, with your loved ones. Uh, it's not a, a simple conversation. The reality is that we're all gonna pass and if we're able to, to help one person, three people, up to eight people, um, I mean, what, what better legacy can we leave behind? What a beautiful um, video that was and story the Amesqua family just shared with all of us. Hopefully you'll be inspired to 
to make a decision like they, they had to make, but they are very, very proud of the decision that they made. So Father Dan, do you mind if I ask you, um, what is the church's position on organ and tissue donation? I think you could say, we mentioned it sort of at the beginning of the program, that the church is very supportive of uh, the idea of people identifying themselves as uh, organ and tissue donation uh, donors. Um, the idea of uh, gift of self uh, goes to that extreme. We're in the month of April, we, we're celebrating Easter at the beginning of this month, and, and the whole image of Christ uh, giving of himself inspires every Christian to say, how can I give of myself? Um, John Paul II, um, now Saint John Paul II, probably was the, the most ardent uh, spokesperson for the church's position that um, there's nothing contrary to the faith. There is no sense of uh, mutilation of the, the body. There is nothing that goes contrary to the faith in being a, donator, a donor. To the contrary, he said, it is an act of great uh, charity a great a gift of love to be able to uh, to give uh, a part of oneself that no longer uh, is needed mm? uh, even though we have a, a belief in the resurrection of the dead mm? that uh, all those who lie asleep in the earth when the Lord comes will be called to new life our bodies resurrected but um, uh, it doesn't go against that faith to say in the meantime if a part of me can be useful for someone else, then I freely give that. I'm actually looking forward to the resurrection to see how God's going to put all the parts <laughs> back again to the right people. So it will be very exciting. I will give that challenge to God. Okay, God, see if you can find my 50 pieces that are all over the place. Right? So. And, and, Fran and Pope Francis, Barbara, you brought something over that Pope yes. Francis had just mentioned uh, this or was shared. Back in, in September, um, I believe. At, well, he, he met in September with some people and again in October. And what he said was um, that it truly is a testimony of your love to be willing to give of yourself in this way. And what he's most concerned about is the organ um, trafficking that yes. goes on in the world that people are trying to sell their organs or people are trying to buy organs from people who are poor and then turn around and sell them for lots and lots of money and the poor people aren't any better for it. And so when people give as a choice, as a gift of themselves, it's far greater yes. than all this money issue. Mm -hmm. Correct. And Sister Emily, you sit on the um, ethics committee at the hospital. Do you yeah. want to share a little bit about how that might? Yes. And if a family is worried about it, we have the religious directives that's put out by the bishops. And we will take those directives, even that little pamphlet, and show the uh, family members. Because there's a beautiful a couple, three or four paragraphs written on organ donation. And also, if a person is not of our Catholic faith, uh, oftentimes their minister or their pastor will be consulted by the family because we want them to have that peace, peace of heart when they do it. And then I notice that your staff always says to the family members, now, is there anything that you want them to have religiously before we are preparing for the donation. And so every family, we try to provide whatever religion they are, we try to make sure they have this religious. Uh, Traditions upheld. Yes, even if the rituals, not. whatever sacraments, whatever blessings they want, chants, if it's Buddhist, whatever, that, so that everything is peaceful. That's a lovely, um, opportunity and I don't think that many people even understand or know that that happens. In fact, um, every donor is honored here in Fresno from the year, previous year with this uh, very similar to the event that you attended down south where we have donor families come, the people who were, their family members were donors of the last year and there's a memorial service held in their honor and it's a very, very beautiful thing. And then we have the recipients from the area 
who have received the gift of life come and say thank you to mm. those families. It's very moving. And it's, it, we're not just talking about statistics. Yes, there is a great yeah. need in the valley. There's a great need in the state of California. Currently, there are about 21,000 people on the waiting list in the state of California. Um, of those, 40% are Hispanic. Of those, we, can, we don't break them down into different, um, their religious background, but we believe a large percentage of the Hispanic population are of the Catholic faith. And so there, the, the, the data is there, the numbers are there, right. the people waiting. Right. There are 21 people that right. pass away every single day in the United States waiting for a life-saving transplant. Yeah. So what we're here <laughs> hoping to do today is share the church's position, to share um, personal stories, about people that I have had the pleasure of meeting, knowing, uh, being in their homes, being in their lives, and likewise, I feel like they're my friends, and I feel mm -hmm. very much called to do this work, similar to your calling, <laughs> probably Barbara's calling <laughs> and Father Dan's yes. calling. I feel very called to this work. I feel like it is very, yes. it's sacred, yes. and that I am allowed in this space with all of you. I'm honored. So. Barbara, how would you like us if we could um, share just a little bit about Charlie before we close today? How would you like us to remember oh my Charlie? Charlie was a man of faith. Um, even dying, he was a man of faith. He said, I'm ready for whatever God wants for me. And um, he was a man of passion. He believed in things. He was a Knight of Columbus. He was involved with helping out at St. LaSalle. He was a donor ambassador. He was passionate about being a family man. And he lived all that. None of, none of his health issues conflicted with the values that he lived his life with. And so every, always, he always said, God will provide. Whatever it is, whatever we need, God will provide. And so I hold those thoughts very Close dear to, to my heart mm -hmm. because I have to think about those things when I'm sad that I don't have him physically part of me. Thank you, Barbara, for sharing all of those nice feelings with us about Charlie. So for the whole month of April, let's see if we can't share our stories with everyone that we come across and say, you know, have you made that decision? It's National Donate Life Month. Let's see if we can't help other Charlies' lives be extended, other Sebastians, other Edwards, all of these families. Let's see mm -hmm. if we can't help heal another person's life. Hopefully people would understand too that this is, it's not just a Catholic um, issue or mm -hmm. a Christian issue. I mean, every person who out there is, uh, who is given to uh, be generously inclined to support their brother or sister in need, this is a, a, it's a human issue. And it's a, it's a human way of sharing our struggles and our sufferings and helping to alleviate those. So, um, you know, this is originating today out of our Catholic TV station, but uh, this is really a, an invitation to all people yeah. of goodwill, of different faiths, mm -hmm. to really consider um, sharing what God mm -hmm. has given them and sharing it with others. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing all of your story, all of your years of wisdom and experience with me and ho all of the viewers today. And once again, I'd like to say, if you haven't made your decision, you may sign up by going to www.donatelifecalifornia.org or the DMV. Thank you.